Yo, what's going on, Mr. Merz? Peace, peace, peace to the God. What's going on, my man? Yeah, I'm chilling, man. How's everything on your side of town? Everything is looking all right, man. It's pretty cold down here in the ATL, man. Crazy. I mean, whew. It's like mm. uh, Canada just played, paid us a visit and shit, you know? Oh, man. I don't know if it's that or the New England Patriots. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens um, when they play the, the Rams. Yeah, see what's man. going down, man. It's crazy because, you know, you over there on the West Coast, you know, the, the L.A. Rams is playing over here down in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Something like an East versus West type of thing. I don't know, man. Who do you think is going to get it? Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough one right there. I'm a Giants fan, you know. Well, no doubt, no doubt. I, you know, my, my squad done beat them twice. You know, the Eagles got them. I mean, any given Sunday, man. Um, but Bill Belichick is uh, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with in, in the yeah. Rams. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, arguably the best quarterback in NFL history they're going up against. And uh, you know what? Real quick. I want to bring something up, too. A lot of people aren't aware that the first Super Bowl the, the, the Patriots ever won was against the Rams, but they were in oh. St. Louis. That oh, wow. actually a dynasty. That's actually the first Super Bowl they won. Now they well, have five. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's get into it, though, man. Yeah, because let me tell you, um, I was talking to somebody about that today, and they were like, well, you know, they they they, they started the dynasty, and the Rams might end the dynasty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we'll see. We'll see the outcome of that. I'm excited about that. And, um, yeah, man, much luck and success to the Rams, because I'm telling you, I mean, down here in Atlanta, man, they already did a logo with the Rams in Atlanta colors. <laughs> you know, the Atlanta Rams. Like, they really, you know, they really did that, because they were really worried about the Saints playing the Super Bowl in their house. And, you know, everybody was rooting for the Rams down here. So, you know, going to be a good game. Yeah, it is. It is definitely going to be a good game. We'll see what's going to happen. Yeah. For real, man. But, um, you know, episode number four, uh, about that time, man, you know, about to crack these, crack these, these topics open, man. And we, we got a real – Real good, interesting topic for today. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, man. So we're, let's get let's get right into it, man. All right. So basically, we're going to be talking about a situation that you know has been coming up a lot in the media. It's been coming up a lot in, in the past few years, but recently, as of late, it's been coming up left and right. There's a lot of people are being accused of um, certain situations where I would say um, being accused of uh, sexual assault or rape. And, um, you know, these situations shouldn't be taken very lightly. But from what I see, man, it's just now becoming everybody's, it just seems like every day in the media, something new is happening with a, with a, a celebrity. And, um, we're just trying to get to the bottom of it, and I want to get your take on that, Mr. Merce. Yeah, so pretty much we we just asking the question, you know, is uh, playing the victim the new come up? Or right. Come up at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's it's something that I've noticed. Um, I noticed a while ago, but I'm noticing that it's really ramping up. I uh, looked at this whole Chris Brown situation. I'm sure many of you have heard that. Chris Brown is being accused of rape. Uh, this happened some way out in France. Right. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's really crazy right now. You know, you're looking at guys that are, are very well off in life, mm -hmm. uh, guys that really, they can walk down the street and, and pussy comes to them. I mean, I'm, pardon my French, but they can walk down the street and, 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 and five, ten females be following them right back to their hotels. So, Again, the question is, is playing the victim the newcomer? Right. Um, well, here's my take on it. I think that, um, you know, anybody can be accused of doing anything, right? You know, um, if somebody says, you know, 
Chris Brown raped them, you know, this is what the majority of the people already find this man guilty. You know, they don't, a lot of people should really say, you know, if this, um, these accusations came up that this is alleged that he did these things. But the thing is, when you have those handcuffs on you, you are, or the society deems you to be guilty and you have to prove your innocence. I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about, oh, you're, you're, you're free and you have to prove that you um, are not guilty, you know? Did I say that right? <laughs> but, well. but, but, but basically what I'm saying is that once those handcuffs are on you, you have to prove your innocence. But in Chris Brown's situation, it was one of those things where, you know, there were multiple people around that said that, you know, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. He was never alone in the room with this person from a bunch of sources. Right, and including his girlfriend. It's including his girlfriend. His girlfriend was with him. His girlfriend was with him. So the thing is, you know, and now even this female, I don't know if this is her page or not, but she's been um, putting out stuff on Instagram and stuff saying that, you know, he didn't do it. He didn't rape me. That's false. So you have the, uh, the person who's the quote unquote victim stating that he didn't do it. So where is this energy coming from? And is this kind of ironic to me that this whole thing has happened once Chris Brown got his, uh, control of his masters. So he pretty much owns his music now. And then this big situation has happened right after that. So is somebody out to get him? Or is this a situation where, you know, um, somebody's crying wolf? Or is it a situation where something really happened? Yeah, you never know. But my thing is that, you know, if you have a bunch of females that were around, him partying with him and a bunch of people, a bunch of eyewitnesses saying that, you know, they were never alone in the room together. Where did this story come from? Who generated this story? Mm, Critical thinking. And and, and the thing about it is, I think that, you know, it's been too many stories that have been coming out with celebrities and people saying that, you know, this person sexually harassed me or this person raped me and this person did this and that. I'm not saying that some of these stories or these accusations aren't true, but my thing is that it just seems like now, you know, stating that somebody has done something to somebody is a form of a new come up, is a a form of a new way of um, uh, getting money or or getting this cash cow. And and, And the thing about it is, and the thing about it is, you know, if if this is what some, not all women are doing, this is this is very bad because it sets a bad precedent precedence that, you know, people who are actually or women who are actually raped, you know, it makes it hard for them to come forward to tell their story because you have somebody else that is right. coming out and saying that, you know, well. I was raped and this and that and this happened when it really didn't happen. Very good point. And I want your take on it because I have a a, a solution to that problem. I have a solution to that problem. Okay, okay. Sounds sounds like money, man. Well, my take on it is is very similar to yours. Uh, You know, I I said in the first show we did, the uh, 2018 wrap-up show, that we got to be mindful of patterns. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Patterns and, and... things that are going on in the, in the media. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Chris Brown situation just so happened to, just so happened to happen right after they announced he was, might be the youngest artist to now own his masters. I'm, I'm right. not 100% sure about that, mm-hmm. but something major. I mean, and to all the people out there that are not really familiar with the music business, I mean, owning your masters is like, like the holy grail uh, for an mm-hmm. artist. Okay, you're in, you're yep. pretty much in control of your destiny and, and in control of your catalog, and your your catalog, your back catalog. So, 
there's a lot of powerful um, things that happen when you take control of your masters. And this is not something that every artist is afforded, okay? There are a lot of big time selling artists that don't own their masters. They're, they don't own shit. Right. Okay? And Chris Brown has achieved a level of success that I guess it was just, it was inevitable. You know, and you got to think about guys like Jay-Z as well. And I believe Nipsey Hussle's another one. I believe he owns his masters. Um, this is really serious stuff right here. Yeah, it's, it's quite a few people. I know LL Cool J is another person who owns his masters. Um, right. Him, uh, who else? Prince actually got his masters. He owns his masters. Eventually. He fought, yeah. he fought, but, uh, yeah, he fought hard for it. Yeah, for sure. What, what happened? You know? Yeah, well, he's no longer with us. May he rest in, um, where you rest in peace. Rest in peace to Prince. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, back to, you know, the, the whole, the whole spill with, with the whole Chris Brown situation. The, right. He was accused and, and T.I. was actually the person that actually brought that to the forefront um, mm -hmm. about the whole situation involving um, Chris Brown and just the, the irony that he was, um, you know, accused of rape, you know, right after he, they announced that he now owns his masters. So that's something serious right, right now that we need to be um, very mindful of. Okay? And, mindful of that. and remember, too, it, they reported that Chris Brown was arrested, but then right. he was released with no um, charges filed. Right. So what's that about? You know, I'll I tell you like this, cool. Uh, I want people to realize something. There's typically two courts that you have to deal with. You're going to deal with the, the regular court that you go to, you know, you, you see the judge, and then you got a court, which is public opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are tried in both courts. Typically, people are tried in the court of public opinion first. Yeah, which of course. Is a guilty verdict in the real court. So when you put out a uh, you put out a story on an artist that is at the caliber that Chris Brown is, mm -hmm. the come up comes where the person probably never got touched. The person probably might have never gotten raped. I wasn't there. I can't tell you one hundred percent. It's a legend. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you got to think about something. What what does a person have to gain from that? There's a lot of things you can gain from accusing somebody that is famous. First of all, let's be clear, your social media is going to be popping within that time frame. Yep. Your social media is going to be, you know, your followers is going to go up. People are going to start checking out your page. People yep. are going to start doing certain things to, um, you know, check out who you are, check mm -hmm. out your backstory. And I just feel like this whole accusing artists and accusing certain people that are prominent in, in the entertainment business, whether it's in front of the camera or people behind the scenes, okay? I feel like these guys are sitting ducks. They're, they're sitting ducks and Ooh. sometimes we take people at face value. We take right. fans, real fans. But really, um, a lot of these people looking at you as a come up and they're looking at you as, as a victim. Mm -hmm. And I want all the artists that are aspiring to, to be in this entertainment industry, I want y'all to, to, to throw caution to the wind. Mm. Okay? You got to be mindful of the company that you keep. You got to be mindful of the people that you're around. Okay? You got to be mindful of the people that you're with and the other people that they bring around you. because let me tell you, two or three of my homeboys might hang out with a girl that's in my entourage, but yeah. when it's reported and said and done, and she, she files some type of charge or she alleges something, guess whose name is going to be on that indictment? The main person, the main the artist. It's always going to be, because let me tell you something, Cool B, in business law, mm -hmm. once you heard the business law, is that whenever somebody is hurt or somebody's allegedly injured, you sue everyone. Yeah. 
that's a that's like a rule in business law. You sue everyone. So is 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 victim playing the victim the new come up? Hey man, it could be. And also, I would like to say something else about that situation. Even if, and I'm just saying this about any any artist or anybody who's who's not an artist, whoever. Let's just say like you have some friends or whatever, and they're at your house. And you could be in another state, you could be in another country. But if a situation goes down at your house and somebody says they that this a situation happened or alleged situation happened, and then um being that it's your property, you could get sued. Because your name is on the on the mortgage or your name is on the lease or whatever. And you and you couldn't even and you were probably like halfway around the world. But being that it was your property, the situation happened at your property, you know, you're going down for that. You're going and, down. And then the thing is, so that's why you definitely have to tighten your circle, get knuckleheads out of your circle, and just kind of know who these people are around you, because at the end of the day, man. They can cost you your livelihood. Yes, it could cost you your freedom, man. And, yep. and I want to touch on something too, Cool B. Um, I'm I'm sure you heard of the rapper Freddie Gibbs. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. From uh, Indianapolis. Shout outs to Freddie Gibbs, Gary Indiana, stand up. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, about a year and a half ago, uh, Freddie Gibbs was accused of, um, uh, I believe, a rape in, uh, I believe, it was New Zealand. I want to I want to say it was New Zealand, and yeah. they. Had him and and remember Freddie Gibbs is not as big and as a as a Chris Brown. Right. It did make the news, but it didn't make a lot of noise. But at the end of the day, this this brother was kind of dragged through the mud and come to find out that the person that alleged the whole thing, um, that the case was dropped. Like they didn't even, right. you know, they didn't even they 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 kind of like held him down. They I think they he flew to France. I think they held him. The victim claims all this stuff happened, and then everything just fizzled out. But the the, the thing is, from what I heard, that he wasn't even there. What what, what whatever happened, he wasn't even. Cause I I think she said that it was him and some other people within his entourage was hanging out, and I guess she got assaulted. But Freddie Gibbs, he wasn't even nowhere around that situation when it happened. Right. So yeah. and, and and most times, um, you know, these guys have brands. So why would you even want to implicate yourself in something some type of nonsense like that? Right. Now, the reason I'm bringing up the Freddie Gibbs and with the Chris Brown situation is these uh alleged victims were from overseas. Mm -hmm. Um Europe, obviously France, and out in New Zealand. And I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder now. Mm -hmm. You know, the United States, as a society, has a vision of us as black, or you know, black Americans, or whatever you want to call us, Moors, whatever. You already know there's already a preconceived notion about us in the media. Okay. Yeah. We've always been looked at as aggressive. We've always looked, you know, Hillary Clinton with the with the super predator comment. You know how America views us. But what I'm starting to wonder is, like, is the rest of the world starting to view us the same way? Um, from what I think, I I I feel that some places do look at us and view us in a certain light and they have us under the microscope hold up mm -hmm. let me let's play about something american television is pretty much being watched all over the world the globe of course so if the powers that be are staring the narrative come on now it's, it's a no-brainer that the rest of the world maybe look at through the lens of the media is looking at us as you know these kind of predators these these people that can't control their sexual urges whatever 
because these things are starting to happen to artists overseas. Okay. Right. So is is the narrative being spread worldwide about you know the um, image that we as black men have around the world? Is is you know is is it being perpetuated around the world that we are like this? Because I, it's just ironic to me that these things are starting to take place overseas, uh, abroad, and in other borders now. Yeah, I think that pretty much people are paying attention to it, and um, and you know, I, I just think that sometimes, a lot of times, us as being black men, we get a bad rap about stuff, and we're and, and, and to me personally, this is my opinion. I think we are one of the most hated races, but celebrated at the same time, you know. It, when it comes to the music, people like the music, people like the fashion, you know, when it, when it comes to popping bottles and drinking and listening to some hip hop and all of this, we're good. Hey, but, when hey, cop, hey. but when the cops start rolling around. Also the package. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, listen, man. <laughs> How are you gonna leave out the package? Listen, you know, Come but, on, you know, but it, when it comes down to it, it's like you. It's one of those situations where we we get get the short end of the stick when it comes to just who we are, man. If like we spoke about this a couple of times before in private, just about like um, you know what's going on with a lot of artists as far as being harassed by this, 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 these uh, undercover cops or this hip hop police stuff. And I'm like, right. yo, yo, dude, I'm like, these guys are just doing music. They're doing music. Right. And I said before, if these guys weren't doing music and these guys are all scientists, would you have a special scientist task force to come and follow these dudes and harass them and plant drugs on them and do all of this stuff? So it's, to me, it's just, it's just, um, it's just very weird to me how a lot of these situations have been going and the direction that we're going and what television kind of shows the world. But a lot of people have been calling out, um, I guess, people over here in Congress, like it, the, the president of the Philippines, he's a real one, man. He was just like getting in, um, people over here who are higher ups getting in their ass about, you know, you worried about one thing, but why don't you worry about the treatment of black people in your country? Because mm. the thing is, Preach. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, if you're black and you have money or whatever, you know, yeah, you good. Why are you complaining? You got money. But I don't think money is not Come the on. answer to everything, for one. You said what? Bill Cosby, anyone? Yeah, Bill Cosby has a lot of money. And then he's in jail right now, you know? And it's just like, when you are in a position where you are, when you're doing things as far as like business, you can't do business and 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 party hard and, and think you can do a lot of things that you can do when you didn't have money. Because at the same time, you know, once you have that cash in your hand, a lot of people from all all walks of life want to come around you. You know? And it, and it's funny because one day you could be the guy who's broke, and then the next day you come into some cash and it's like boom. You know, you're the, you're the guy that everybody wants to hang around. But is it because of your personality or is it because of your money? So it's just, it's just weird to me how, you know, a lot of these situations play out. And, and my thing is, for all the women out there who have been assaulted and who have been raped or whatever, I think that you should definitely, you know, your voice, and you should definitely don't feel ashamed come forward, you know, speak to people that you need to speak to. And, you know, it's, it, it's not your fault that you got raped. But at the same time, it's just, I'm talking about a lot of these women who haven't been raped, who want to cry rape just so they can get a fat bag. You know, and 
And a lot of it is just sad because my remedy to that is if you said this person raped you, right? And you want to take this person to court and you want to bring them to the ring or whatever, you should be able to, or you should be forced to take a lie detector test. It's as simple as that. Take a lie detector test. Right. So, so a lot of things will have to get out of control. And if you, you pass your test or whatever the case may be, and this is just my opinion, this is just a thing, because there's been so many people who've been accused of rape over the course of time that haven't been, um, that haven't got their just due, man. And, you know, even some people have been put. It ain't due. Right. And, and some people have been put on death row because of that. Or, or, or have been in jail for X amount of years, but then this new DNA testing came out and now they get out of jail and then you're like older, like you've been in there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and then all of a sudden out of the blue you're getting released and you're coming home to nothing. Like, that's like almost your life, your half your life or whatever, flushed down the toilet. But and if you can't get back that time, a lot of times these guys get a, you know, they 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 file lawsuits and they'll probably toss them like a million or two yeah. or gag order on them and right. tell them all about your business. And and really the it's really the people, the citizens and the residents that that end up paying for it anyway. They, right. Exactly. So I'm like, and also, and and I don't want to digress, but you know, I read um, an article about um, a police officer who was um, down in, I think he was down down south somewhere. I think it was Florida, and you know, he was um, planting drugs on people, and he and you know, and these guys were getting arrested and some of these people, if not majority of these people who were caught with these um, drugs, which they weren't, they didn't have drugs on them. He planted meth in their cars. These guys were in jail and this guy was doing this and he had like over, I think it was over, it was way over a hundred cases. I don't know the exact number, but they looked at at least a hundred of this guy's cases who was the officer and they had to go back to like tapes and footage and, and do all the, and this is costing the taxpayers money that this dude was doing this. And I'm like, yo, dude, there has to be some sort of police to police the police, you know? Because at the end of the day, if this guy can get away with all of these cases where he's planted drugs on people, like, how is this, you know, you you're a person that gets caught and you spend an X amount of time in, in prison for this guy's um, malicious behavior, why should I have to spend my time in prison if I'm a free, innocent man and this guy's going him up um, doing what he's doing? Yeah, I mean, that's a problem, man. And and I just want to kind of get shift back towards the um, these women out here that are, that are right. bringing up these allegations and, and these um, against a lot of these celebrities and and we're not and we're not and we're not women bashing or anything like that. We're talking about a lot of women who are just lying and accusing these guys of assault or rape when it didn't happen. That's what we're speaking on. Well, well, well what I want to say is I wish someone would do a goddamn study on these females. Right. Somebody needs I mean seriously, we need to we need to open up uh, some type of investigation or some type of study into the characteristics, because you know people do things like they study the the patterns of a serial killer. Right. So with a lot of these females that are out here, I'm sure they they share certain things in, in common. Right. And I feel like there should be some type of study done on females that come out and accuse people of things that, and I'm talking about the cases where these people are proven uh, innocent. Right. Someone needs to do a study on these females, the behaviors, the places they hang out at, and just do a study and release it to the public. So people could be a lot more aware of this type of behavior. And yeah. maybe in the, in the study, 
they'll they'll come up with a name for this because it is too it's happening too often out here and we need to really uh you know hold these women accountable the law is not going to do it um the law is really in the benefit of women to be honest with you mm -hmm. and typically no repercussions for someone coming out i mean you think about that football player uh from california long beach uh brian banks yeah brian okay. banks for sure i mean they I mean, this young lady ruined this 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 guy's uh, oh, some his, his whole career. His whole yeah, career. He, he was the blue chip, man. I mean, this guy was was slated. He was primed for the NFL, and he lost some of his best years due to a young lady falsely accusing him of rape. He was in jail doing time until this same young lady finally came forward and and and, and fucking admitted she fucking lied. Well, and they had to release. Her. Well, that part right there, yes. She admitted that she lied because I, I believe she uh, befriended him on Facebook. And then she wrote him in a message that, and, and, and I don't quote me on it, but I believe that's how the story went. She befriended him on Facebook and then sent him messages on there stating that she lied. But also, she received a lot of money for that situation. So she became, I, I, I wouldn't say rich. I think she got somewhere, don't quote me on it, around a million dollars or something. It was, a, it was a good couple of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, she got a large sum of money. And the thing is, and I believe now, you know, she's still free. And I don't know if she had to pay some of that money back. And she ruined this man's NFL career off of a lie because she was mad at him i guess they had sex or whatever and he didn't stick around and she got mad so she just made that story up and my yeah. thing is that did she have to pay that money back is she gonna do jail time behind that or did they just say you know what ah it happened and move forward but i mean at the end of the day you know, this man can't get those years back of his life. The, not even the football thing, just his life in general. But then you got to look at his career, you know? And, and so, more than a career, I mean, you got to look at his reputation. His reputation as well, too. I mean, this always come up. You, you got to understand the stain is permanent. Right. I mean, even when you're, you're exonerated from a rape case, you're still going to have rape connected to your name. So. Yes. At the end of the day, getting your name back, clearing your name, it's, it's, to me, it's never really clear. And the way the law is set up, they protect these females. They, they, they don't give out the name. So the person just pointing the finger and, and making the accusation has all the security in the world while somebody else is left out, hung out to dry. And the, thing about it, and the thing about it is, too, in this society that we live in, you know, it's always the guy who lies. And, and I'm looking at him like, hold on a second. So women don't lie? So it's only men in this society who lie. No, men lie, women lie. You know, so don't just think that men are the only ones out here that are, not, that are, are lying and, and being um, manipulative and all of this other stuff because that's false. You know, and the thing about it is, you know, I think, these women who, who lie and accuse these guys, they should be held to the same standard. You know, if these guys, you know, who didn't do this had to go through the ringer and you accuse these guys or whatever, and they were supposed to get X amount of time in prison, I think the women should get that time in prison for lying about these guys raping them. You know, right. so it, it's, it's sad. I think that it's something that has to change. And I think you know, it's it's something that down the line, you know, it's going to make a lot of men, and, and I already see it happening now, it's going to make a lot of men not want to even be around women. Or in settings. You said what? In certain settings. Yeah, in certain settings, right. Or just, you know, because the way society is now, you can't even say hello to a woman without there being any static or whatever. So a lot of men are, are, are 
Talking about the Me Too mob? Yeah, well, I mean, just because somebody says hello to you doesn't mean that they want to talk to you. You know, is this a greeting? Hey, how you doing? You know, whatever. How's your day going? Whatever. But it's just one of those things where... Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, I just think that, you know, I think society as a whole, a lot of things are shifting from what they used to be, you know? People, people are not as um, friendly as they used to be. Everybody's on edge about something, you know, and everybody is, we, we live in very stressful times and, and it's just, is this a different, is this a different time in life? And I don't know if it's gonna get better and I don't know if it's gonna get worse, but we're just moving forward and a lot of right. things are just happening. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, but th at the end of the day, fellas, for all you cats out here within the earshot, listen, man, you know, measure five times, cut once. Mm, measure deep. five times and cut once. Right. So always cross your T's. Sometimes you got to double cross your T's and dot your I's because remember, there's someone out here that's struggling and they're looking for the quickest way to get a buck. And if that buck has to come through you, it's going to come through you. Remember, those people at the store begging for money at the gas station, you know, <laughs> the same way the dependent asking for people trying to get a come up off of you, there could be a young lady out there doing the same thing. She's just doing it from a nice Instagram account and she got a fat ass. <laughs> you're going to look at the bum a certain type of way because he's homeless, but you're going to fall for the bait with the fat ass. Yeah, I mean... Out of y'all got to realize, until society starts making it um, making it harder for these people, these, these particular individuals that are bringing up these allegations, you, you guys can continue to, to watch it happen. So don't be that person. Don't be that victim, man. Watch yourselves out here, man, especially when you have some type of celebrity because trust me, there's somebody watching your account. There's somebody watching your following. There's somebody watching your ascension that wouldn't mind using you as a stepping stool to get to where they need to go. Yep. I mean, it happens, it happens all the time, man. It happens all the time. That's what you need to take from this show. And that's why we're bringing this up, man because it can happen to anybody. It can happen to Chris Brown, it can happen to you. And trust me, Chris Brown is lawyered up. Are you lawyered up? That's the question. That's true, it's real stuff, man, real spit. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I just think that what you put out in this world comes back in return. So all money is not always good money. And if you are, are trying to um, put certain people in a position where they have to fight for their lives and, and you know, it's just one of those things where you may have the tables turned on you and, you know, that's just never a good place that you want to be at, being accused of something that you didn't do, man. So I just tell people to just be leery around certain people be leery of people in your circle. If you have people in your circle that's going to bring you down, mm -hmm. they don't need to be in your circle, man. No matter how many years you've known them, whatever the case may be. Because if you're moving forward and you're trying to elevate and they're not trying to move forward and elevate with you, you know, that could be a bad situation. A disaster waiting to happen. Facts. And that's what we're trying to help y'all do. Send radio cast on Mr. Mercy. I mean, man, cool breeze. And this is Sim Radio Cash, man. Make sure y'all email us anything, any subjects that I want us to touch, anything you want to, you know, discuss. Uh, we actually have someone that actually wrote us. We got a show next week for y'all. Oh, this yeah. One, you know what I'm saying? This one's for the ladies. Young lady, um, just hit us up about a specific uh, subject matter. We will uh, release it next week. It's going to be a pretty dope show. And I hope y'all enjoy. Again, um, is playing the victim the new come up? Ooh. To me, I would say yes. And uh, for all the folks out there, again, please be cautious out there. 
everybody does not have your best interest in mind. So right. with that said, uh, I'm going to sign off. Um, cool B. Stay blessed out there, brother. It's always good chopping it up with you. To all the people that's listening, Sin Radio Cast, Strength and Numbers Radio Cast, salute, spread the word. Yeah, we just keep coming with, with more of that, uh, more of that real talk, man. All right, man. Peace. Peace, brother.